Let's ask Ime Udoka, who was asked today, uh, Thursday, if Al Horford looks fresh. He does. It's noticeable. Um, you know, whether he found the fountain of youth or it's just the time off that he got uh, not playing all the games last year in Oklahoma City. Uh, I mentioned having him in Philadelphia where, um, you know, he set out some games here and there, but for the most part, he's come back in shape. He looked great since the day he came into training camp and, you know, talked about how he took care of his body and how much of an opportunity this is, and he's happy to be back. So you can see with his body and, and how he's playing, he looks lively, fresh, and, you know, looks rejuvenated. So we're, we're loving what we're seeing from him. And you had mentioned that in Philly, maybe he wasn't put in the best positions. I mean, from can you go a little more into that? Just what did you see? How could he have been used? How was um, it? Just in general, we had a big team. Obviously, uh, you know, you got him and Joel, but then you got Tobias and Ben and some big bodies there. And Josh Richardson was part of that. But um, a lot of times, you know, you're going to put your bigger player, a lot of teams put big players on Ben. And then obviously save one for Joel. So a lot of times they had, you know, two guards and small forwards on Al a lot. And I felt, you know, we could have took advantage of some of those, um, not only putting him in positions, but getting his mentality right to attack those mismatches. So that's just something that I saw while I was there in my time. But, um, you know, he, like I said, last year in Oklahoma, he was more back to himself. And, you know, the two times we played him last year, he played great, uh, played with that young group and having the time off is making, made him rejuvenated, but we're also putting the emphasis on, if they're guarding, you know, Jason or whoever it may be with a bigger body, you got to take advantage of those other guys. Why would anyone want Al Horford on their roster at any price? Ime Odoka will take Al Horford on his roster at any price. This is very clear. And I needed to reiterate this. It's almost like a repeat of, let's say I said things yesterday and Ime Odoka today separately. I didn't ask him these questions, actually. It was other people. It I. I posed some things yesterday and Ime Odoka just basically confirmed them. Um, on, I, I asked, I, I did it on the Wednesday show or the Thursday show. And then at Thursday practice, Udoka confirmed what I said. So I was thinking, Hey, you know what? Ime Odoka is talking a lot like Al Horford's going to be the starter. And everything that came out of his mouth about, about Horford was very clear. It's about, creating matchups, matchup issues, playing him off of the Jays. I'm, I'm thinking that he's, he's now moving into the starting role. That meter that I was talking about in yesterday's show, the starting, the starting lineup meter with Al Horford in it, which was a little lower. I'm pushing that kind of close to the top, maybe at the top. I feel like Al Horford now, after a week of, of practice, the Celtics are off on Friday. I'm I'm starting to move like I, I believe that Al Horford's going to be in the starting lineup somehow, and I think it's going to be at least for the first preseason game. They're going to see how it looks. I would I would bet that it's going to be Rob and Al in that starting lineup. You hear how he's talking about the Philly days and how they could have taken advantage of this and how playing next to Tatum and Brown that he's looking for Horford to create matchups. What I think Udoka wants is a starting lineup of Smart, the Jays, Rob, and Horford. And maybe you play Horford in shorter bursts and you sit him down for a little bit and then bring him back with Dennis Schroeder because I like the pairing of Schroeder and Horford. But whichever it is, he, I think, wants that starting lineup where... A big has to choose. Is he playing Horford? Is he playing Robert Williams? If the big is going to play Robert Williams, because Rob is not going to be going all over creation on the perimeter, and you now have a four that has some size, instead of putting that size on Jason Tatum to try and bother his shooting, you now have to decide, am I putting that guy on Tatum or am I putting that guy on Horford? Are you challenging Al Horford to take advantage of a smaller player on him. Do you defend Tatum and say, hey, look, we're going to put length on Tatum. We're going to try to make him shoot over the top of that. We're going to make it difficult and force him into mid-range fadeaways, the weakest part of his game. Is that going to be their strategy? Or are they going to put the big guy on Horford? And is Horford going to punish that mismatch enough where 
the other team has to make a choice. I'm, if I'm getting into Udoka's brain, I'm thinking that his line of thought is to make Tatum better. We're going to put Horford out there. And this whole concept of when he says we could have had him punish those mismatches more in Philly, he is going to do that now. In fact, he might be trying to prove a point. It's possible. I don't know how it went down with Brett Brown or maybe Joel Embiid or whatever. As I said in yesterday's podcast, if you didn't hear it, it's hard to tell Joel Embiid, get out of the way because Horford has a two guard on him and we're going to let Horford cook. Embiid is not that type of guy. Embiid is all about Embiid. Embiid cannot help himself. So him stepping away and saying, yeah, let Al Horford cook. No, there's a reason why that everybody that Embiid plays with has trouble fitting next to Embiid because it's Embiid's way or no way. And so I think Udoka wants to make this work just so the folks in Philly can be like, oh, oh, if we had just done what you had said, then we would have been okay. You think about it. They had Horford. And if Udoka does something here that works with Horford, think about the headlines in Philly. If Al Horford plays the four next to Robert Williams and he gets those mismatches and he punishes those mismatches and the story in December becomes, whoa, Al Horford and Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are such a dynamic trio because opposing defenses have to pick a poison and Horford is still capable of punishing a mismatch and, and making those defenses decide. And it's opening up the world for Tatum and Brown. If that's the story, it'll get back to Philadelphia. It'll get back to Sixers fans and they'll be like, wait a second, where was this? And now you say, well, we had Adoka as the assistant coach and well, he clearly, he now, he's now saying, yeah, I wanted to do this in Philly and we didn't. So if that happens and it works in Boston, then that's a little extra mm, to the Philadelphia folks, because that's why you got Horford. That's part of why you got Horford and it didn't work. So I think there's on top of everything on top of him hoping that this works and thinking that it could work. I think there's a little, you know, Hey, Philly, just, just wanted to let you know that I tried this with you. Just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind, Philly. I tried this. You didn't want to listen. Now here we are in Boston and it works. So that just continues my, my belief. Uh, Ime Odoka is all in on Al Horford.